Okay, just give me one second. I'm just about to door dash some bubble tea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today, I want to talk about giving yourself a little bit more credit. Hey there, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday. We talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing. We talk about yarn things. We talk about specifically making time to make things and just how important it is to take that time to make things. Now, like many of us, we have uh, a lot of time in our hands. What we need right now is uh, more than just a way to use up that time, but to use that time in a way that is comforting, in a way that is encouraging, Encouraging in a way that brings light and uh, just a bit of levity to the things that we're feeling right now. And so one of the things that we were talking about last week was, you know, knitting and uh, keeping busy with knitting, stockinette, or things that are really, really simple, working on projects that are really simple, like my handwoven scarves, those kinds of things, and finding the joy in making with each stitch and just the relaxation that comes with this repetitive, uh, meditative activity. Now, one of the things that's come up in the past two weeks, and it's just kept coming up and coming up, and I just couldn't stop this nagging feeling of picking up <laughs> my crochet projects. Now, here is the thing, and this is the thing that I want to talk to you about. It is that for my, I don't know how long, I started learning how to knit when I was in grade four, grade five, and I also learned to crochet around that same time. I learned to crochet, found like a crochet hook, and I remember you know, doing a little bit of crochet in my basement at my parents' house. And even though I learned to knit and I learned to crochet at basically the same time, I've had this ongoing narrative in my whole life where I basically tell myself, I'm not a crocheter. I'm not good at crochet. I can't read crochet patterns. Literally anytime crochet, the subject of crochet comes up at knit nights or whatever, I would say, oh, you know, uh, you know, uh, crochet, it's not really, it's, it hasn't really been my thing because, you know, I'm not good at reading the patterns or whatever it is. And it's, it's not that I don't like it. It is incredibly fun. Uh, I just, it's a story that I tell myself and it's not true. <laughs> so I came to believe over the past couple of weeks that in fact, my story shouldn't be that I don't know how to crochet or I'm not good at crochet because in fact, I, I started a crochet project like eight or nine years ago, which is basically these squares, these cute little squares. I've made like 80 or 100 of them. They're all in this bag here, like all of these tiny little squares. <laughs> I've made like a million of these squares. And so it's not like I don't know how to crochet. Like I obviously figured it out in order to, to do these things, but it's just this story that I tell myself over and over again that I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm not good at it and all this kind of stuff. And so I wondered, as I was thinking about this for myself, I wondered if this is maybe a story that you've told yourself too, that like, oh, I couldn't possibly. Oh, there's no way that I could pick up a new skill. Oh, there's no way that I could learn something new. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't know how to do that. That's really not my thing, you know. I hear it a lot, actually, from other friends who, you know, have seen me knit, and then they'll say, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I, I, I don't think I have the patience for that. Oh, I, I, I can't figure that out. And I feel like it's not true. You can absolutely do this. And this is kind of where I'm thinking you could give yourself a little bit more credit. I could give myself a little bit more credit that, you know, I can figure out crochet. And yeah, so for the past two weeks or so, since I had a Zoom call with some girlfriends of mine, um, one of them is Kim Worker, who taught a crochet class for Craftsy, now Blueprint. And uh, she taught this, she taught actually several crochet classes, but one of the most recent ones she did was the Afghan 
uh, a crochet blanket, like a crochet afghan, and it's just a very, very simple ripple blanket in crochet. And after we were having this conversation, we were kind of talking about granny squares and crochet, and, and we had also had like a, a Zoom meeting with the Sweet Georgia group, and, and Stephanie on the group, she does a lot of crochet, Charlotte does a lot of crochet, and Stephanie was talking about this um, granny stripe blanket that she's been crocheting just from scraps of sock yarn and all of these little little hints and bits and bites of conversations about crochet really kind of inspired me or got me a little bit obsessed. I went through my entire attic looking for all my crochet hooks and I don't know which size I used for these anymore, but I found um, some crochet hooks and started a couple of projects. So you will know that um, this is my sweater that I've been working on for a couple of weeks now. This is that throw back sweater, not the throw over, this is the throw back, this is the cardigan. And so the cardigan is almost done. It's got one sleeve is done. I'm working on the second sleeve, I'm nearly there. And after that, I just have to pick up for the front bands. I think there's a collar band as well. So I'm gonna pick up for a couple of bands and then I am going to finish it, wash it and finish it. Now, as you can see with this lovely yoke pattern, there's these accent colors in here, but I still have quite a bit of yarn left over. And so with this worsted weight, yarn. I just was looking for something to make that was cozy and so I had this and I had this and um, my kids had started to use this yarn, this extra yarn, to like run around the house leaving trails of yarn everywhere and I was like no 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 no, no. this yarn can still be used for something <laughs> and so I collected it all back and I started making myself a granny square blanket. So just starting from the center and then making a granny square and then just, I think the plan is to basically change colors every three rounds. And so we'll just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And I have no plans or premeditated ideas about what colors are gonna go in here and when. I'm basically just going to use scrap yarns that I have, leftovers, yarns from these projects. I have this, this, and then I have a couple of other balls of these things that are have been going on. So. You know, these are springy colors, summery colors, and just all together, I think it could be really just a fun blanket, just really a comforting thing to do. Now, I also found the right size crochet hook to make a mini one with sock yarns. So with the sock yarn, I'm using a 3.5 millimeter needle here. And with the worsted weight, I'm using a size H. I don't, I don't know exactly. I think this is like five and a half millimeters. That's the thing. Both of these needles basically came from the Japanese dollar store. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> they don't have multiple sizes printed on them. But in any case, I'm using this 3.5 millimeter one to make a tiny little granny square out of sock yarn. So this is leftover sock yarn. This is the leftovers from the symphony shawl or like that symphony shawl project, the one that I used to make the color gamp. So it's like a bunch of gradient party of fives. All of that is going to go into a sock weight granny square blanket. And then I have these leftovers to make this giant classic granny square. Now this granny square is, yeah, it's that classic pattern. It just starts in the middle and then you're just building out four corners and continuing along. This pattern here that I started, these little squares are so cute and so pretty. And I love this project. I love these squares that I've crocheted. Like I stuck with a very limited palette and I just kept using, you know, the same colors, just mixing and blending in as many different ways as possible. So just like pinks and blues and just, oh, I love this project. I love this project, but now it's come to the point where I have to join them all together. And now it's like, well, now this project, hmm. So that is kind of the point that I'm stuck at. I have like, you know, 80 of these squares and uh, I have to arrange them in a certain format and then be able to join them all together with uh, a round of cream, just a, a round of undyed superwash DK. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep going with that.
Okay, so if you are interested in this particular crochet blanket that I have been making for the past eight or nine years, it's called the Summer Garden Crochet Blanket. It's by, it's designed by a woman named Lucy at Attic24. She's had a very long running blog about crochet. She loves making very colorful crochet blankets. And so I'll, I'll post a little link in the description below to her website where she gives an extensive, extensive photo tutorial for how to make this particular blanket, how to make these little motifs, and then how to join them all together. Now, in terms of what I've used here for my particular blanket, I used probably about seven, maybe eight colors at the most, like six, seven, eight colors total. It's all been made in the Sweet Georgia Superwash DK, so it's a DK weight yarn, and uh, I just have like all these balls of scrap colors that I just pulled together to make this. And so there's some orchid here for the pink, there's ginger for the brown, there's gold mine, uh, which is like the yellowish color that we had, but there's other colors of yellow that we have now. Uh, there's a this color, which is glacier. Um, tourmaline, which is like a very old color that we had like a long time ago, discontinued color, but it's a very, very super saturated um, turquoise blue. I, I, now I would probably substitute with something like Beach House and uh, with Deep Cove. Those would be good substitutes for that. For purple, we have, this is a wisteria colorway that we had from a long time ago um, that we still have actually. And yeah, so it's basically, I chose a very limited palette of colors and then I just randomly mixed and blended, you know, which one was the center, which one were the petals and which one was the outer color. And so that's what I've done. And then all of them are going to be uh, with the fourth round of, of, of stitches, all of the fourth round is gonna be undyed yarn. Um, yes. So now I've sort of arranged all of these so that they will all look <laughs> nice and randomly splattered. I didn't want too many of the same colors being close to each other. I didn't want to randomly start piecing things and have, you know, all of the gold mine or yellow pieces end up at the end or something like that. So I wanted to lay them out and arrange them so I could see and you're piecing a quilt, basically, is what it is. So I've just arranged them so I can see exactly how I want them to go. And um, yeah, so if I wanted to, I could add a few more squares. I have space to add maybe seven more squares on one side and then just kind of mix them in with what I've already got. But I think I have about eight by nine. So however many that is. It's about 70 some odd pieces. So this will be, <laughs> it'll eventually be eight squares by 10 squares all together. So 80 squares all together. And then it'll give me like a nice lap blanket. It'll probably be about the size of a of good size baby blanket or a, you know, sit on the couch, watch TV kind of blanket too. So this may become a thing that I will finish during this time. You know, lots of people talking about finishing projects. So that is what this is. So let's talk about the next thing. So that is the comforting thing that I've been working on this week. I've been working on finishing my giant throwback sweater. And so that is very wonderful and comforting. It's just stockinette, it's in the round, it's wonderful. Working on these, working on these crochet projects now, like also wonderful, very comforting. We wanted to talk about something else that's really, really comforting, and that is related to the release of this new pattern that has just come out, and it's been designed by one of our Sweet Georgia ambassadors. So I wanted to share it with you guys and explain to you a little bit about this and what it is. So this is a hat pattern that is kind of like a color work hat pattern that was designed by Athena Chang. She's one of our uh, Sweet Georgia Ambassadors, like I mentioned. And so she's designed this beautiful hat pattern and it's knit up in two different colorways here. So what I love about this is Athena is um, a relatively new designer. This is her second pattern ever that she's designed and released. And it's a color work pattern and it's got, you can see these little patterns of little bubbles. They're supposed to be little bubbles. And the bubbles are supposed to represent the boba or the, the tapioca pearls that are in bubble tea. 
Now, if you don't know what bubble tea is, bubble tea is basically a drink that is like, it's a dessert drink that's come out of Taiwan, like, I don't know, many, many years ago. And um, it was popular in Taiwan and then came to North America and sort of started a, a bit of a trend in, in parts of North America. So here in Vancouver, tons of bubble tea shops. They started coming out. I started to notice them when I was in university. That's a long time ago. And um, <laughs> it's funny because it's a Taiwanese drink. My parents immigrated to Canada from Taiwan, um, but they were not really familiar with it. I was not really familiar with it. I was introduced to this by two of my friends who happened to be from Norway and Germany at the time. They introduced me to Taiwanese bubble tea. But in any case, bubble tea is this drink that is basically made with tea, different kinds of flavored teas. It's got milk in it, and then it's cool. It's a cold drink, or it could be served hot too. And then you put these giant balls of tapioca pearls into the drink. And this is like, it's a dessert, it's comforting, it's very cozy. And you know, like over the years, it this became this thing where like my husband and I, when we were, we would have our dates before we got married, like our date night was basically to go to the bubble tea shop, get two giant bubble teas. And then like, that was, that was the evening, right? Like bubble tea and walking around or bubble tea and watching TV, bubble tea and binge watching West Wing. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, kind of what our life was like then. So bubble tea is actually kind of a thing at our Sweet Georgia studio now too. Charlotte will actually make the tapioca pearls at the studio and she makes bubble tea for everybody on the team. And so people will, you know, <laughs> have bubble tea at work. So yeah, there we have it. So Athena Chang's second ever design. It is a color work design with these cute little bubbles on it. You could take any two colors of sock yarn that you might have, something that would provide a good contrast, and you'll get to be able to enjoy making these cute little squishy bubbles on your hat. If you've never done color work before and you're apprehensive about trying it, we do have a course on the School of Sweet Georgia called Modern Color Work Knitting. And it shows you, you know, how to hold two different colors of yarns at the same time, how to hold them in different hands, how to hold them in the same hand, you know, how color work works, all of these kinds of things. That's all taught in the School of Sweet Georgia course that you can find there online. Athena did watch the course before she made this hat pattern. So that might be helpful to you as well. And again, it goes back Back to this idea about giving yourself a little bit more credit. If you're thinking, oh, color work, I don't know if I could ever do that. I think you can. I absolutely believe that you can. If I can crochet, you can do it. So that's about it for today. I would love to hear very specifically about if there is a situation where you feel like you've created a narrative for yourself, where you haven't given yourself enough credit, do you think that there's actually something that you could do but you just tell yourself, oh, I could never. I think you can do it. I think like all of these things, I think you absolutely can do it. But you might be telling yourself, oh, I don't know if I could do that. So I'd love to hear about what you think those situations might be and how you might break out of that, that narrative that you've given yourself. Yeah, we all have things that we tell ourselves that we can't do, but I believe you can do it. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for being here for this episode. Thank you for being here every Friday to watch me talk about yarn and color and all these kinds of things. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here every Friday and we talk about yarn and knitting and color. Thank you so much for being here. Please take care, stay well, stay healthy. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now. Is it TV time? Uh, it's gonna be lunchtime soon, yeah. So can I have some TV? Uh, did Papa say that you got it? Got what? TV? Did you did you earn your TV today? <sighs> Papa said I can earn my TV by doing work, and I did work so. so I did. It's, it's it's okay. I did now? work for like sixteen minutes. Did you? You did you did homework for a whole sixteen minutes? I think. TV.